Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. I want to speak to you uh, about a concern here this morning, and I want to show you in function and application that people are really, truly not as concerned about other people as they present themselves. I want you to listen to me very closely, okay? I think probably there's probably no better uh, example to use than straightway, okay? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use straightway as an example, all right? The first nine years on this community, yours truly, Pastor Dow, um, my family, and I had two children, um, and, and my wife, we were living um, probably in what you would consider to be deplorable conditions. Um, to us, while we had, you know, we lived on this land and electricity and running waters provided, I took my family personally and we lived um, probably in the worst conditions out of all the families that we had here on this community. As a matter of fact, I spent time making sure that the other families was comfortable um, before my own family. And we were fine, you know what I mean? Because of uh, the disciplines that I, as the head of my household, um, had placed upon us, and, and my wife was very supported, and we were content. As a matter of fact, those were some, probably some of the most happiest times and point, you know, of, of, of happiest years we experienced simply because we really truly didn't have many distractions uh, whatsoever at all. The ministry wasn't as big as it is today. Um, and, and so we had literally uh, no municipal water supply, what you call running water. I was willing to make the sacrifice and did make the sacrifice. There's no wonder the Bible says, blessed are not the hearers, but the doers of the word. But there are people that live here on straightway that has never, ever peed in a bucket uh, or had their, their butt on the bucket or has never even really used the bathroom outside because they've always had running water. Uh, and of course, we, we um, made a choice and decision based on who, uh, considering their age uh, and their health. Well, now, you know, I, I, got, I live in this home. Uh, they used to be the fellowship hall and gym. Uh, though I've turned into a home, um, and I'm here now, and now I have running water. But uh, even at that, uh, this place is, you know, I, I can't tell you how many people has actually used our bathroom on the community or people coming for feast days and, and the amount of people that's actually stayed in my home. But this is what I want to talk about right here. I need, I said all that to say this, that most people who fancy themselves as my judges or want to judge the ministry has never, ever once even considered living one measure or one iota of this lifestyle. The majority of people get on here that uh, claim that they are my critics and they are self-appointed critics. Um, they're still renting. They don't own anything. Um, they still depend on, you know, the world for their living and their function. And yet still, they have fancied themselves as my judge. Now, you know, here in America, um, this country has deceived so many people by making them think that they have freedom of speech. Um, and, of course, they do. As an Israelite, you don't have freedom of speech. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Torah um, puts a, it puts a gag order on your mouth. Uh, there are certain things that we just simply cannot say and cannot do um, because we're under the law of Yahweh. Now, America affords you certain liberties and rights to, to be able to speak what you want. And, and in this society right here, people think that they can say what they want and that there will never be any disagreements or repercussions coming back to them. And I think that's the uh, the biggest issue and the trouble we have in this society is that people, while you may have freedom of speech, you need to understand that people also have freedom of speech as well. And if you use your mouth to attack someone or to speak unwise words, you're going to get hit back. And that's what people in this society is not used to. They're used to saying whatever they want, and nobody ever challenging them on their position or perspective or point of view. And when, of course, then that happens, you know, when they get challenged, next thing you know, uh, starts the envy, the slander. And, and mind you, they started this the whole time. Well, 
Um, even now, even now, um, we have homes uh, that are off the grid that, that people just simply, they do not want to live on grid. Um, everyone here straightway has had the opportunity um, to pick and choose the way they want to live. Um, and some people have literally declined. So what will happen is, is I'll get people that come here and visit and they may go into a home and they may realize that this home um, doesn't have the modern day conveniences. And that's because of choice, their own choice. While we are moving, regardless of what people's choice are, you know, are or what they have come to, to actually uh, make the community um, a little bit more what you call it to us is already socially acceptable because we're used to living like this. Most of you have never even thought about making the sacrifice. And you know what's amazing to me? If you never made thought about making a sacrifice of living like this, how can you fancy yourself to even give an opinion or be someone's judge? See, the hypocrisy is just literally amazing, isn't it? Well, I had somebody come here and make a statement. And, of course, they didn't make it here. They waited till they left to make the statement. And the statement goes something like this. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how hypocritical people are. And, and you can use what I'm saying in almost every aspect of your life. Because people may think that they are really, truly concerned about other people. But the truth is they're not. They're not. Um, and before I go on, let me say this too. You know, we have an extraordinary amount of people that come for meetings. And we have a lot of saints that live around the community, adjacent to the community, around the community, or, or close to town. And the saints, they have a good spirit. Um, they don't have any trouble whatsoever at all housing the saints. Well, I had a family uh, one time that used to attend here and, and attend here for some time. And, and, and they have a very nice home. Very nice home, plenty of room, the whole nine yard modern, as you can get swimming pool. Uh, all, I mean, they, they got a nice place. So I made a suggestion to them. I said, how about you house uh, these people right here? And I had my wife to communicate to them. Oh, mercy. Whoo, man, you talking about crap hit the fan. Man, see, it was all fine and good when people are staying in my house. It's all fine and good when I'm uh, ha uh, housing people at the community and stuff. But you being a saint of the most high, allegedly, at least that's the way you presented yourself and thought you were. When we ask you to do the same thing, all of a sudden, man, we, 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 done, we done committed the unpardonable sin. All of a sudden, you can't do it. Well, I don't know these people and I die. The Bible didn't tell us to know the saints of the most high. It says when you go into a city township you inquire thereof who is worthy and thereby abide that's that's that is the attitude and the sentiments of the word man we got kicked back and resistance i say hey that, I, i'm sorry did i even mention it you will never ever ever have to worry about me ever asking again it, oh, i can't remember if they did house them or not um, but but regardless, just just the, the the literal kickback from someone who say that they're an Israelite to have that kind of selfish attitude is utterly amazing, utterly amazing. Um, because I've had a lot of people come stay in my home, and straightway first and foremost, yeah, it's a community, but it is our home. It's not Shoney's, it's not Denny's, it's not the Hampton Inn, it's not the Best Western. No, it's not. It's not, it's, it's not none of these places. <laughs> and, 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 and don't worry, uh, we're going to leave the light on, but it ain't Motel 6 either. It's our home. And so anyway, I had some people, you know, they, they came here, left, and they said, well, I think Pastor Dow, um, and, and you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's a little shame that some people there do not have running water. Now, mind you, they don't know if it's their choice or decision or not. Um, while we may not have running water in some places, look at this. We do have. You ever been to a campground before to where you have a male side and a female side, a shower house, everything, and where you also have a separate facility as far as where you eat at and you have the kitchen and everything that you really need? That's pretty much how we're set up here. Um we have plenty of running water. Uh, we have we have a shower house, a male side and a female side. So nobody is, is actually living in conditions that will 
uh, be what you call atrocious or, or it'd be a health risk. And, and how I know that? Because I've got these rednecks around here that are so concerned about us. Yet and still, that they just found a, a family the other day who have literally been running feces, sewage, on top of the ground for 25 years. And you know what they, you know what this system did about it up here to them? Nothing. But yet I can have somebody to make an accusation, an allegation against us up here, and we know the reason why too. And yet and still, they'll bring down all the force of their so-called uh, law. Uh, they'll bring all these alphabet soup um, uh, departments out here, and they want to inspect the stuff. And every time they come out, and I think they pretty much just stopped now because it's been some quite some time. Every time they come out, they find out we're in perfect compliance. Even though my land that I live on right here myself is unrestricted. We're grandfathered in. And um, but but man, they want to try to come and, and, and they and they figure it out that it's just it's nothing more than modern day lynching. That's basically what it is. Old fashioned modern day lynching and stuff who actually want to cause a lot of problems. And I say, hey, I, I don't have anything to hide. But if you really, truly want to see some deplorable conditions, all you have to do is go next door to us and go look at those homes up there and now go over there and investigate. We don't call them on them because that, if that's their choice and decision to want to live that way, they can live that way. I don't agree with it. I really, truly don't agree with it, but that's their choice. That's their decision. They want to live like a bunch of rats and moles. So be it. So be it. But the opposition... Once you come in on this road right here and you look at these some of these homes up here, I mean, it is sad. It is really true sad. You get a breath of fresh air once you crest the top of the hill and you, you, you can tell when you hit the land straightway because there's like some anointing and some, some spiritual confirmation comes over you. All of a sudden, wow, you feel like you have just entered into a place of paradise. Now, I've had people leave here and say they're so concerned about people's living condition. And I said, okay, well, I, you know me, I'm going to find out how concerned you are because people are quick to give an opinion. People are quick to, to, uh, 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 be opinionated and give that point of view and perspective or something. And I found out real quick that while people may say a lot of things, they really truly is not as concerned as you think they are. So they, they express concern about why this home doesn't have this, this home doesn't. And I said, I'll tell you what, I said, I'll tell you what, that home is going to cost me $2,000 to get a septic system put in. Put the money right here. And also, in order to um, uh, run the water line and, and to be able to uh, upgrade the bathroom facilities and set up to run the water line, it's going to be another $1,500 plus water here and pump. Put the money right here. And also, um, just to be able to modernize this bathroom the way that you, you think it ought to be and stuff, it's going to cost another $2,500. So put the money right here. Right, right here. So we're out right now. $5,500. So um, since you're so concerned and you love these people so much, put the money right here. You know what I found out? I found out that these hypocrites did not love their brother and sister who they were so concerned about because they know me. They know if, if I tell them to put the money right here that I will do with the money what I said I was going to do. But they, I found out, and you know what? I was able to this, but it's amazing how many crickets that I got and how their mouths just Shut up and nothing to say. Oh, they were opinionated. Oh, and they gave all kind of ideas and stuff when I when I started requiring of them to help to be able to, since they were so concerned and they love their brothers and sisters so much, even though they don't know that we have a lot of people here that just simply, even while they're on the community, they don't care nothing about being on grid. They really truly don't. Because I've offered them many times, here, move here. No, 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 don't want to. Now, whether they communicated that to them or not, I don't know. I don't, but I can tell you that as a man of y'all, and I've been doing this for many, many years, I don't too much give too much stock to what people say. I pay more attention to actions and actions that, now here's the key, actions that people do not do because they speak louder than what actions people do. I've learned this over the years that, that, you know, there's a communication that takes place amongst us as a people when people refuse to do things. If they refuse to do certain things, they're telling you a lot about themselves. Um, when they refuse to speak on certain things, even though you ask them an, for an answer, they, they're telling you a lot. So you pay attention to the things that people do and the things, especially the things they don't do. 
that'll tell you a lot about them. You, that'll be wisdom because even in ministry, uh, there's a lot of people out here preaching and teaching. Oh, you hear what they capitalize on in a ministry, but pay attention to the things that they never talk about. That's letting you know who they really truly are. Well, I found out these people who were so-called concerned didn't have a lick of concern and neither did they care about their brother and sister like they thought that they did. Because whenever there's something required of you in order to show the faith that you speak out of your mouth, that you are so concerned about in your heart, you find out your heart is wicked. You find that you're the biggest hypocrite that ever walked the face of this planet Earth. And you know the reason why these people couldn't do it? Because they're living off the benevolence of somebody else. They're not paying anything to live. Somebody else is paying for their livelihood. Isn't that something? And yet still they have the audacity to give an opinion about the way we pick and choose to live. Nobody ever goes and pick on these Mennonites or these Amish. Have you ever been to one of their communities and seen all the horse crap and dung and everything else that's around? Have you ever been there and, and, and went up to one of these um, Amish stores and smelt these people? These people smell worse than a dog in heat in summertime uh, at 105 and the heat index is at 110. These people are funky. They nasty as hell. And you know what the counties does? They give them paved roads. And, and you know what else? They put signs up. And if they have businesses, they make special signs and point you to their businesses. I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder why. Of course, I have my own reservations. I have my own conclusions I've drawn for this, and I know why. But it's utterly amazing. And these people are something else, but, but all of a sudden, you come to straightway, and we're, I'm telling you, we are pretty modern. How else could I be talking to you now? How else could you see the Shabbat services if we were not? But I think the thrust of this video is this, is, is that you people need to understand that while people are bumping their gums, and they're running their mouths. People really truly don't love you like you think that they do. Because if they were really truly so concerned about you and they loved you, you know what they would do? They will provide a living for you. And these hypocrites, with their sorry, sorry, sorry opinions, because they are sorry themselves, they don't love like you think they do. Because it's easy to run your mouth. It's easy to murmur. It's easy to gripe and complain. But you know what? It's harder, much harder to do. You better believe it. Blessed are not the hearers of the word, but the doers. So when I start requiring of others what I have already done myself, I found out, guess what? These people's religion is vain. <laughs> they are hypocrites. Now, are they ever going to get this? No. People who hear this right now will get offended at this correction, even no matter how truthful it is. They simply can't handle the truth. You see, when you have somebody that's making an attempt to live a set-apart life, you out of your mind if you think that I'm going to let you and your words and your judgments affect me when I am doing what the book says and you're not. <laughs> I will be a fool to let you judge me. There's no way that I will let you judge me. I'm going to judge you. Because I've been where you are. And you people on the land here at Straightway, that, 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 that sometime because of your weak spirit, you listen to some of these mentally challenged people that come in and stuff that that able to pull your wicked hearts. Everybody here, hey, the, I've always said it, the gate swings both ways here straight away. Nobody is under any duress whatsoever at all to live here. People have the liberty and freedom just like they came. They have the freedom and liberty to go. Yeah, they do too. Hey, yeah. and, and, and but know this, once you go, you're never coming back. You're not coming back here ever again. And I found out one thing over the years. That the people who have been here on the land, ain't nobody trying to go outside that gate. Nobody. Nobody's trying to run outside that gate and say, well, we're sick and tired of this. We don't want to live this way. No. People are doing everything they can to stay here. As a matter of fact, if I put the word out right now, if I was key to put the word out, if I was, I could have 20 families that will pack up their goods and be here to live on this land, even if it's off the grid, in a matter of three days. Think about that. 
So what is it about straightway that people are looking to get in, but hardly few, very few people are looking to get out? And it's amazing. People over the years who have come here, <laughs> listen to this, listen to this. And this is for all you community heads and leaders and assemblies out there. You need to understand this. You've got people who contribute nothing that expect the most. <laughs> and then you got people who contribute a lot. They expect very little. Go figure which one is the righteous ones. And you can tell people about their work ethic. You, yes, you can too. And one re and I've learned over the years, the people who contribute nothing or very little, even of their time and themselves and monetary funds in themselves, um, it's amazing when they come in with nothing, they expect to leave with a lot. No, I've stopped that. I have. I've had people come here um, that did not have a pot to piss in and a wonder to throw it out of and a yard for it to decompose in. I mean, they came with nothing. Nothing. And I let them leave with thousands of dollars in their pocket, a car, um, a, a vehicle, uh, and even made the way for them to actually get their belongings and things that they have amassed since being here in the community with them. You don't never hear that. You never, ever, ever hear that side. I've had people come here, Eric Fun, some of you people who are uh, appalled and are with, with his testimony. How is it a testimony when you are overcome? Testimonies are given when you are an overcomer. Not when you uh, so-called overcome, at least to be. But this man came here with $8,000. I gave him, and he lived here for three and a half months, and I gave him $6,000 back. That's the truth. I have variable, verifiable eyewitnesses. I mean, he ain't going to tell you that, though. No, these people ain't. These are examples of, uh, of what type of liars that people are. Um, it's utterly amazing, but that's humanity. That is humanity. Once they get something in their head, I'm telling you, it's over with. It's over with and it's done. So I pretty much, I don't know all that there is to know about humanity, but I know a hypocrite when I see one. And I do know this, people do not love you like you think that they do. They really, truly don't. What a nation of hypocrites some of you are.